Oh, I guess it's time for part two, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I think it is. Part two of me talking about my autism in a new installment of Storytime with Mikey. <laughs> now, the, the first time I talked about this about it, about a year or so ago, I uh, talked about how I was diagnosed, when I was diagnosed, and um, how I dealt with it, and how uh, people treated to treat me were because of it. Uh, because of it. <laughs> but I think in this one I should tell you all the things I did. <laughs> you know, the uh, typical things that people with autism do, regardless of where they fall on the spectrum. Um, again, like with me, like I said before the first video, I have what's known as high-functioning autism and ADHD. So, when it came with me, I would talk to people about things that I was highly interested in. And yes, for us certain people, certain people who shan't not be named, I do have a lack of interest in certain things. Most people with autism have what's called special interest an interest in only in certain things, and a lack of interest in other certain things. Okay? It does not mean that I don't have any interest. It means that I have an interest in this one thing, and not this thing. You may like this, I happen to like this. That's what it means. Thank you. And growing up, and I still do, have I had interest in Elvis Presley, The Three Stooges, SpongeBob SquarePants, food, of course, <laughs> but more so than what other people did with certain foods, and um, drawing pictures. And I would talk at nauseam, at nauseam, to people who could give two shits about what I was interested in, you know. The same goes for Harry Potter. I can talk all day to you about Harry Potter. But there are some people who hate Harry Potter and could care less about what I have to say. But there I am, for 10, sometimes 20 minutes, talking about Harry Potter, Elvis Presley, SpongeBob SquarePants, and me drawing my pictures. <laughs> and they were always the same pictures. I always drew the same thing. No matter what the situation was, I drew the same thing. And there were people that were just too nice to tell me to shut up, to go away. I mean, I'm happy that there are people out there that are nice enough to do that, but I never knew I was being a burden <laughs> to people. That um, I never got the hint that I'm annoying these people. I never got the hint that I am on their nerves, that they don't want me to continue to talk about this subject or this topic, to change the subject or go or to go away. <laughs> um... And this is a bit of a combination because I also have my, I've also got mild Tourette's as I've gotten older, more control over it, thankfully. It was never that bad to begin with, but um, my tics from my autism and my Tourette's would usually kind of intertwine with, with one another. And um, I still do this. I always catch myself doing this because I've got to, to this day, sit on my hands. When I get excited or whatever, whether it be worked up in any for any reason, like if I'm watching a TV show or a movie and something happens and I either get excited or I get uh, angry about it, my hands, I'm going to do this on my own accord this time, boys, will do this. And I'll make this face. I, I do that a lot. It can be annoying. I have somewhat, some kind of control over it. <laughs> Although, uh, some people who see me at, when, I, when I'm not in the house and I do this, you know, whether it be in a store or a friend's house or whatever, and they don't fully understand it, they don't know what I'm doing. They don't, I had, before I was diagnosed, I would do this in school. And my teacher, not going to say anything bad about Miss Kermines, my third grade teacher. Miss Kermines was a decent teacher. She was nice. But because I, there was no diagnosis at the time, didn't know what I was doing, and she called it the shimmy shimmy cocoa pop. 
because she didn't understand why I was doing that so much. To the point where she told me to sit on my hands so that my hands would not flail around the room. And I was actually diagnosed with autism in third grade. I was nine years old. So after she got the paperwork from my therapist, she then kind of laid away from talking to me like that because then she understood, then she finally understood what I was doing why I was doing it and I didn't have at the time much control over it now that now I do to a point I mean the control can only happen it can only take care of so many things um <laughs> and um so again as much control as I have over it sometimes it slips out sometimes it happens and I'm able to catch it Unfortunately, not before somebody sitting next to me is able to see it. Like, what the fuck are you doing, you psychotic? <laughs> yes, I've been called a psychotic many times, many times. Oh, I don't know. Am I psychotic? I don't know. Mike, are you psychotic? I have no idea. I don't. I don't know. I gotta look that up. <laughs> um, if you haven't noticed, I'm still nervous talking about this because even though I've got autism, I don't have a full understanding of it. I never did. I got diagnosed with it, and I've just never been able to grasp a big understanding of it other than I fall under an umbrella. There are many uh, groups under this umbrella of where you fall into, and I haven't fallen in one, in one where other people fall into this. My basic understanding of it is all I really understand of it other than that um, I do things differently than other people because I'm not normal. <laughs> what is normal? I don't know. I don't even think normal is a real thing. It's a word people made it to feel better about themselves. But I'm abnormal. My brain does this, whereas another person's brain without autism will do this. And my brain takes a little longer to comprehend what this brain's trying to do. Uh, you can see I'm trying to make this funny. I am nervous as can be. I'm trying my best to make this funny so I don't have to do a tr a tick. <laughs> so, yeah. With, when it came to my autism, I would obsess over several things, but have a complete disregard to anything else happening. It's like, I... I'd be in class. I want. I, this is before they put me in special ed. I would be in class, and they, I would walk over to these people, and I would talk to them about Harry Potter. I talked to them about Elvis Presley, and then the, the poor teachers over here trying to give a lesson to the whole class, and I'm just getting up out of my seat. I am talking to people all around the room. I am. My mind's in la la land, and she's here just trying to do her job, and I'm not making that easy for her. <laughs> And then you've got people who know me, but don't understand autism le as much as I do, and that's, that's still very little. So, and people who don't know me, who have never met me before until I walk up on them, and I tell them, I have autism. And they're like, you can't, you don't look like you have autism. Well, so how, what does autism look like to you? Because there are many, many variants of autism. It's not one particular thing that's a stereotype. There are, it's different for everybody. We all act differently. Though you can't just make the assumption, well, this person looks normal, so he must be normal. That's a terrible assumption for people to make. <laughs> I know sometimes they can't help it. They don't fully understand it. Even we sometimes don't fully understand it. Like, um, some people don't understand why I'm a, I'm a guy, but I wear a pink shirt and I wear nail polish. They think they, I've been called gay. I'm not gay. I feel comfortable as a straight male to wear pink shirts, nail polish, and shaved arms. I feel comfortable being able to be feminine and therefore by being different. Same as being autistic. I'm okay with having autism. It doesn't really hold me back. I mean, yeah, I've got to, it takes me a lot longer to learn things than other people. But that can actually be a good thing. It means we can get be perfected at what we do. You know, we can do this better than the other person because we're going to learn it, learn it at a slower pace, you know? 
My goodness, my goodness, we're already at 10 minutes. This is a long episode. I am sorry. I apologize. But I'm going to leave it there because I think that's all I can talk about without, without me rambling. Because if I keep going, I'm just going to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat the same goddamn thing I've been talking about. That's a bad habit I have. When I run out of things to talk about, I just start repeating the same thing I just said moments ago. And then I begin to ramble, and then everyone gets, and then I, even I get annoyed. So thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.